In Faro, in order to store data, we use variables. There are different kinds of variables. We have talked already for about uh, instance variables, about uh, class variables. There is also uh, local variables that are used only for inside methods. And there are variables you can use in a workspace. Now, in the case of workspace, creating a variable is pretty much straightforward. Let's pick a name for a variable. Let's call this test. Or let's call it tiger. In order to create a, a, a variable, we have to create for an assignment for this variable. You have to assign something to the variable. We have chosen the name, we have typed the name. Now, what we do is we enter column, the equal sign, and what we assign to that variable. In this case, we are going to assign the instance of VG Tiger demo. VG, sorry about that, VG Tiger demo. New. Now, what it does in this case is that it creates an instance of the VG Tiger class and assigns this instance to this, uh, to this uh, variable. So we can use now this variable as if it is the instance that we have actually stored inside it. So we can do tiger open demo. Sorry, no open demo, right? That's wrong. Run demo. Okay. And this happens. Now, if you don't want to select and uh, right-click do it, we can, use, we can use the command D command uh, shortcut for macOS and Alt, I think it's Alt D uh, and similar, something like Alt D in Windows and Linux. So we have to do this. You see, it runs. Because what it does in this case, it, it, it knows that uh, the tiger is uh, referencing the VG Tiger demo instance, because we have instance here, we have created an instance here, and, and what it stores is the address to this object, this instance. So when it does, it's actually replace it with that instance here and calls its method, run demo. Now, if all we did was Tiger assign VG Tiger, uh, VG Tiger, come on demo. Now what happens in this case, we don't assign an instance of this class of VGTiger demo, but rather we assign a reference to the class itself. So when we do the same command here, let's say we do this assignment here first, and then we do this here, and do it. What it runs now, what it executes now, is not the instance side run demo, but actually the method that is on the class side, which also is named run demo. Of course, we can, you know, uh, execute other uh, other commands as well. Uh, it's not really a problem. There are other methods as well. What really happens here is, uh, one thing that we have to observe here is that the reference to the instance now is lost, because now what Tiger is referencing is not the instance uh, object here, but rather the class itself. What happens inside Faro is that there is garbage collection, so the reference to the object is lost, and instead it's replaced with a reference to the class itself. There are many things that we can do with variables, not just to store references to objects and instances of classes classes and instance of classes, but also to do basic th things like basic math uh, calculation, like for example, uh, you know, uh, result 1 plus 2. So what it's going to do here is going to, let's do this, it's going to do the calculation it's going to add uh, 2 to 1, and it's going to, to uh, reference the result, assign the result, back to the result variable that we created here. There's a way to actually 
see what is inside the variable. Uh, in this case, we can do this, print it. Now what it does, it prints uh, the, the value that's assigned inside result, which is the result of this calculation here. We can also do, sorry about that, result and print it immediately. So because it's already unsigned, we see the assignment is still there. Another thing we, you can do a more sophisticated tool is to use an inspector. You can right click here and inspect it. And sure enough, we see that this, the assigned variable is three. But if you see here, we have a class, we have instance variables, and it gives us the variable in different formats. The reason for that is because everything, as I said before, is an object. Even a value is really an object. In this case, the value, which is a number, it's actually a small integer class. So it's actually an instance of that class, a small integer, which is usually for small, uh, relatively small numbers, like 3, 4, 5, 100, 20, 5, uh, 2000, etc., etc. For bigger, big, much bigger numbers, we can use uh, different kind of classes. If you want to store text, then say that's we name a variable text. Now using single quotes, single quotation marks, we can create what is called a string. For example, hello world. Always remember to put a period in the end to say to uh, Faro that you have finished. This is the end of the line of your command. Do it. And now hello world is assigned there. We can now inspect it with inspector. And we sure enough we will see that there is this is what it has been assigned inside. And the class is a byte string in this case. So now what we can do is do transcript. So uh, sorry, I always get this wrong for some reason. Transcript. So, text. So in, instead of passing a string as we have done in the first uh, tutorial, which I explained the very basics, now we pass here a variable that contains a string. And if we open a transcript, mm, this is what happens. Sure enough, this is what is going on. So this is actually the basics of variables. We will we're going to use variables a lot in coding with Faro. So you have uh, all you have to do is understand the basics that we have done here. And if you, even if you don't understand everything I've said, that's perfectly okay because we're going to use these things again and again and again, and they will going to become a second mentor for you. So just play around with this, what I, uh, I have showed you. You can use multiplication, you can use division, uh, you can put things inside parentheses to give priority, so you can do 1 plus 2 uh, multiplied by 3, and this is going to give you, of course, oops, uh, print it, it's going to use 9, because 1 plus 2 is 3, uh, multiplied by 3 is 9. So, you can, you can just uh, play a bit around with this. And in the next tutorials, we're also going to show you uh, more and more ways to use this kind of some concept because those are very basic concepts that we're going to use uh, in many other tutorials and you're going to use uh, in many cases while you code. That's it. See you in the next tutorial.